Katrina Hurd. I'm an Associate Professor at the Institute for Marine and Antarctic Studies and I'm a marine biologist who specialises in seaweed research. I'm the lead author on a new textbook called Seaweed Ecology and Physiology. It's the second edition of a textbook that was first published 20 years ago. So we've got 20 years of new information in addition to the original text. This, uh, this is the new edition of the book. The book's a collaboration between myself, Paul Harrison, who's in the University of British Columbia in Canada, Kai Bischoff, who's at Bremen in Germany, and Chris Loban, who's in Guam, in the USA. The seaweeds grow in the coastal environment, and that's where they form habitat. So they're habitat forming algae. If you haven't got seaweeds, you have no habitat for animals to live in, and you have no food. So seaweeds feed half of the food web in the coastal environment. So half of what all fish and shellfish eat comes from seaweed. So in the new book there's a large section devoted to molecular biology and this has allowed us to understand where seaweeds have evolved from. We used to think that red seaweeds, green seaweeds and brown seaweeds were closely related to each other but now we know that they've evolved along separate evolutionary lines. The green seaweeds are closely related to the terrestrial plants that the red seaweeds are the most ancient group of seaweeds and that's why they're so diverse and such a large biodiversity and the brown seaweeds are the most recently evolved group of seaweeds. Whole new communities of seaweeds have been found that we didn't know existed before and one of those is deep water seaweeds growing down to 80 meters and these are large kelp and they grow off the Californian coast and they didn't wash up on the shore because when they die they wash down into a submarine canyon so no one had discovered those before. And we also understand the importance of rafting seaweeds. So these are seaweeds that are ripped off the rock and then float around the ocean. And for example, in the Southern Ocean, there's about 70 million floating rafts of Davilia at any one time. So we've also found out much more about Antarctic seaweeds. They, these seaweeds have evolved at four degrees centigrade and less, and they're cold adapted species. And they, we thought, we didn't realize what rich diversity of seaweeds there were down there forming large underwater forests. So internationally, seaweeds form a massive industry. So for example, the porphyra industry in Asia is worth $1.5 billion US dollars per year. Seaweeds are absolutely stuffed full of all sorts of novel chemicals. So we'll, in globally, there's a large industry in trying to identify the chemicals in seaweeds and see if they have biological applications or applications for humans. So for example, anti-cancer drugs have been found in some brown seaweeds. Tasmania has one of the most diverse seaweed floras in the world and the potential for industrial applications here is great.